A third-year medical student at the University of British Columbia, James Reed is approaching the moment of decision about what kind of doctor he's going to be. He's torn between family medicine and a higher status specialty. James is probably similar to many medical students who come to medical school who are looking to challenge themselves. So they come to a school where uh, people tell them that if you're really bright you go into the specialties, that family medicine is a second choice, where they hear that family doctors are overworked and underpaid. So we're going to take, make two cuts in this baby, one down each side of the cast. Oh. James is a third generation doctor, and when he comes home to Princeton, B.C., he often works alongside his dad, a family doctor here for 24 years. It's an amazing position to be able to see people when they're in their most vulnerable states ever and have them confide in you and, and look to you for help. Oh, that's cool. Your hand's nice and warm. You can feel everything. Yeah. Yeah. I see quite a lot of new palace formation around the fracture side here. Growing up, James saw the satisfaction his father took from his job. But he's also aware of the toll on personal and family life that comes with choosing family medicine. The demands on my dad have always been huge, and I think he's given up too many of the things he likes for himself. And um, I just, I'm not going to do that. James has yet to be convinced that he can choose family medicine and have a life. The town of Okotoks, Alberta, is only a 20-minute drive from Calgary. As part of his training, James Reed chose to come here to see how Dr. Simon James makes his family practice work, because it does work. There will be things I'll see that I won't have seen before, and I'm also looking at, you know, how is he balancing his family life, his hobbies with, with work. I've got to try and learn from people that have already gone through the same plan that I'm kind of looking at right now. Go a ah, longer, I'm a slow looker. Dr. James tailors his practice around his life. No births, no hospital rounds, no burnout. And like 60% of Canada's family doctors, he's learned how to just say no to new patients. Okay, he's only taking family members of existing patients. So, uh, if you could go back to day one of your residency, you could start all over again. Would you do family again or would you no, do something else? Definitely. I wouldn't do anything different. Nothing, eh? Yeah, no change. I love it. To see that he's happy in his job is very reassuring to me. But there's a medical specialty that interests James too. And it's literally a siren call. Since high school, James has been drawn to the rush of emergency room medicine. How you doing there? You okay? And that's a really exciting atmosphere and there's a really high turnover. You see a lot of different stuff. Things kind of happen quickly, you have to make decisions, you have to work with your hands. So I'm really drawn to that. With the excitement comes more money. Not a minor consideration since the average medical student graduates $150,000 in debt. But the tipping point isn't necessarily the action or the income. The students have said to me, it's not the money, it's an issue of respect. So prestige is an issue as well, and students talk about the prestige that uh, family doctors have compared to specialists. This is no ordinary bus tour. These people are crusaders in pursuit of the Holy Grail. Enough doctors to keep their communities healthy. On my mind as I get on the bus, who can I successfully recruit today? They travel to cities with medical schools. So far, they've been to Ottawa, Kingston, and Hamilton. Two more cities to go. Today, they're in London at the University of Western Ontario. One million people in Ontario are without a family doctor. The 90 communities here today are no longer counting only on government to find them a family doctor. They're relying on recruiters like Lori Nash. We also have a draw this uh at this site for a portable DVD player. In Chatham-Kent, we currently need 33 family physicians. Um, Chatham-Kent's just about an hour away from London. Soon they'll need even more. Within the next five years, another 15 family doctors will be retiring. Every time I recruit someone to Chatham-Kent, it's like putting my finger in the dike. I know I'm going to lose at least one or two more. Every recruiter in this room has the same problem. The Niagara region is currently searching for 94 family physicians. We need 23 family doctors. And we're looking for about 12. Lori and the other recruiters have just four hours to sell their community. 
you like your golfing and all yeah. your water sports. So a lot of pretty, pretty high-tech yes, toys. Yes, very, very high-tech toys. <laughs> For a medical student, a four-year commitment to work in one of the underserviced communities can mean up to $40,000 from the Ontario government. And that's just the beginning. Because the competition is so fierce, communities fundraise so they're able to offer additional enticements. It's an incentive program we've got to try to encourage students to come to our community. We would help with things like uh, ski memberships or golf memberships. There's no charge for their housing. We have their internet cable. All the housing is furnished. We address needs like moving expenses, assistance with purchasing equipment perhaps for their medical practice. We have communities pitted against each other who constantly raise the ante. And when you think about it, if a physician or anyone is attracted to a community and if their primary attraction is the incentive package, then it isn't surprising if they move on to a higher incentive at a later date, maybe sooner than you had anticipated. But communities feel they have no choice. Otherwise... Really and truly you'd be left behind because there's a, a physician shortage nationwide. And everyone is competing from the same po limited pool of people to try and entice people to come to their community. We made all kinds of good contacts. We're looking forward to following up with them. And they're all going to come practice in Chatham Camp. This kind of hardcore recruiting isn't unique to Ontario. Every province and territory offers cash and other incentives to entice doctors. But whether you live in the country or the city and are desperately seeking a family doctor, you'll find this next statement almost unbelievable. If you look at the numbers, we don't actually have a whole lot fewer family doctors per capita than we did 20 years ago. Hang on a minute, what did he just say? We don't actually have a whole lot fewer family doctors per capita than we did 20 years ago. In 1990, when we had a surplus of doctors, there were 98 physicians for every 100,000 Canadians. At latest count, in 2005, there were, you guessed it, exactly the same numbers. So why can't you find a family doctor? Clearly, it has very little to do with numbers of doctors. It has a lot to do with how those doctors are practicing. Nowadays, the young doctors, and probably wisely, are saying, no, we want another life, so we want to work 40 or 45 hours a week, and we want to have our time off, and we want to have our time with our families. And a lot more of the doctors now are women who are wanting to look after their families, so they don't want to work 80 or 90 hours a week in medicine. So the upshot of it is, uh, family doctors trained in 2007, we can expect them to be about 70 to 75 percent as productive, quote unquote, as a doctor who was trained in the 1980s. So even though we're training more doctors, it's not enough to bridge the productivity gap, especially considering the flood of retirements about to hit, and the fact that we're already critically short. Some of us with family doctors, some of us without, and that means inequality of care. So then that begs the question, is that fair? Is that really uh, in the spirit of the Canada Health Act? And I think not. Well, first of all, the Canada Health Act gives you no rights at all. The, the courts have been absolutely clear about that. Zero. No rights. The Canada Health Act simply sets out the general conditions under which the provinces and territories receive health care funding from Ottawa. It's up to the provinces to provide health care. Interestingly enough, we're the country that probably provides more health care for its population without cost than any other country almost in the world. And yet it's not part of our charter of rights that you have a right to health care.